you watch the World Cups and that as a kid and you think, wow, oh, man, if I can do that one day, it would just be because it's the pinnacle. Once again, it's Orchard Defoe! I knew from the first week in pre-season that we were going to win that league. Rangers are champions of Scotland! Never thought I scored five goals in the Premier League game. Now you do that for your district or your school team. <laughs> I probably knew when I was 15, actually, because I was at Charlton at the time. West Ham were interested. So I remember Harry, Harry Redknapp sent some scouts to watch me. Uncle Harry, he was, he was, he was brilliant. Um, all he's ever said to me is just score goals. Didn't really complicate anything. I think in terms of man managing, he's the best. You know, he used to speak to my mum and dad. He used to watch all the youth team games. Proper showing interest. Um, not a lot of managers do that. And he was always approachable. I can go, into, go in his office and speak about anything, but just that father figure really. So I came for like 1.6 million. So when I think about it now, so much pressure because there was a lot of eyes on me because like, oh, who's this kid? You know, he's, he's got him, he's 16 and he's, he's bought him for 1.6 million. So I walked in. The first person I saw was Wrighty, Ian Wright, who's obviously my idol, everyone knows. And I was with my mum and my dad. I walked in and Wrighty was there, sort of like waiting for me. So you can imagine, I was just, I mean, I was in my element. Just wanted to put my boots on straight away. Obviously we trained, spoke to him. And then as I walked through the canteen, I remember Rio Ferdinand screaming my name. I was like, wow, we were like established first team players, um, sort of like waiting for you to arrive. It was just like, it was, it, was, it, was, it was so special. But for me, that was sort of like a, that was like a dream. Walking in, the first person I saw was, was Wrighty, someone I've been watching from, I mean, from the time I could understand football, so yeah. At the age of 16, I'm training with the first team. And even in training, I'd always score a lot of goals in training. So obviously that, you can imagine, you're confident. Um, went on to Bournemouth, because Harry didn't want me playing in reserve football. Because at the time, reserve football was more for like players, that first team players that would come back from injury. So go on loan and then uh, and come back and hopefully you'd be ready to, to, to get in the first team. And obviously when I made my debut at 17 and I scored, after that you just want to, just like you said, you just want to kick on. If I was an agent and I represented the young player, there's no way I would make the young player go and hand in a transfer request, and especially not on his own. Got a lot of stick for that when I was only young. Um, front page of the papers and the backlash was was crazy to be honest. But um, I was quite naive to to transfer requests. I didn't really understand why you needed to do it. Came through at West Ham, loved it there. A lot of my family are from East London, so they're West Ham fans. And all of a sudden, the the people that, who were representing me, they said, obviously you have to hand in the transfer request because if you want to, obviously, go on and still play in the Premier League, I want to play for England, then this is what you have to do. I actually went on my own, agent didn't even come with me. And it was a lonely place after that because no one talks about the agent in the papers. You know, your agent's not on the front page of the paper, it's, uh, it's the player. And I was only young as well, so I had to deal with all of that um, and, and it was tough. I just got my head down, just worked hard and just thought, okay then, well, all I can do now is try and score goals. And then if I end up going in the summer, then I'll go in the summer, but I end up going in January to Tottenham, so. You watch the World Cups and that as a kid and you think, wow, man, if I can do that one day, it'll just be, because so, it's the pinnacle, do you know what I mean? You can, of course you want to play for England, but then when you play for England, it's like, okay, I want to go to like a Euros and that, but even then, I, right, I want to play in a World Cup because the World Cup's special. The whole world's watching. If you can compete at that level, then, then you've done it. You actually get a text, you know, saying you're, you've been selected in the England squad. I mean, it's just the best because when you're young, you, you think about all these things happening, and all of a sudden, you know, you get this text, and you're sitting on a dinner table and you're sitting like, and you, you're looking at Beckham, uh, Scholes, all the Man United boys, and then you know, you have like Rio and then you've got Gerard, Lambert, and it's just like, wow. But then you have to, you get there, but then you've got to stay there. Bex was good, really good. When I made my debut, my first start against Poland, I remember in a warm up, um, he came up to me and he said, just relax and just play your game. Don't change anything, just do what you do. Like you're David Beckham, but at the same time, you're, it's standards. People expect you to hit those standards all the time. So for him to sort of like 
put he's put that to the side a little bit and think about someone else, right? Like a young player is making his debut and that. Okay, just relax, play your game, and that's it. And, and it was it was something that you need. It was good. I didn't go to the World Cup in in in, uh, in Germany because I thought I was going. I started that season so good, but the back end of the season, I remember, um, I sort of like. It was, I dropped off a little bit, maybe, maybe fatigued or, I'm not too sure, but it happens, do you know what I mean? But still, I still felt like I was gonna go. So when you sort of like get the phone call saying, oh, you're on standby, I was a bit like, mm, okay. But then I thought, okay, maybe he's taking some, maybe he's taking Bentley. That's, I think that season he scored more goals than me. I remember texting him, you going? He said, no, I'm not going. Sean Wright said, no, I'm not going. I was like, mm, okay then, cool. And obviously when the squad comes out and that, then you're like, oh, okay, I don't, what's really going on here? So it's, it was hard, it was hard, it was hard, it was tough because I don't know the thinking behind it, but he wanted me to travel with the team. And in training, I felt so sharp, sharp as, probably sharper than I felt all season. I had this conversation with Rio the other day and all, all, my, all my teammates just felt like if we need a goal, JD will come on and score. When you go to a major tournament, you get into like a quarterfinals, a semifinals where you need a squad. It's not about the, play, the, the team that starts, you need a squad. Sven, can't tell, Sven couldn't tell me that because you've had a bad season, I don't think you'll come on and nick a goal. Like, it doesn't work like that. I think if you speak to any England fan, even to this day, they'll say, oh, you should have gone. When you don't go to a tournament, you have to think about who's going instead of you. And obviously, you took a young kid in Theo that hadn't even played in the Premier League at the time, I don't think. Um, so that's why I think people are like, oh, what's, what's, what's all that going on here? Even when I think about it now, I could have took both. Yeah, take Theo for the experience, of course. Um, take me, I, I, I still think Darren Bent was unlucky not to go over the goals that he scored. I never hold grudges, because it is what it is. It's, that's on you, it's not on me. Do you know what I mean? So I don't hold grudges. Like if I saw Sven now, shake his hand, I'd be normal. Harry phoned me, um, and he basically just said, I remember one day Ramos come in, and at the time, he was rotating a team, and then I was, I was getting frustrated. I thought, maybe I need a change. And, uh, and it was so difficult, to be fair. To, to leave, and to be totally honest, I knew he wouldn't be there long. I said, instead of focusing on, just on the, on coaching, he, he, changed, he changed the food and he, do you know what I mean? It's like normally, like now, you get the coaches and you get like, the sports science and you get the medical team and you get the doctors, do you know what I mean? So it's different, like, the manager don't want to step on the sports, like, head of sports science's toes or the head of medical department, or, do you know what I mean? But then he, he wanted to do everything. Harry basically phoned me and just, and just said, listen, we spoke to Tottenham and um, obviously you're coming into one year, like, do you want to, like, can we sign you, blah, blah, blah. It happened so fast, but, and obviously the team that they had down there was such, it was a top team because you had David James in goal. There was like Sol Campbell, Silva and Distan, Lusana Diara, Soli Montari midfield, Milan Baros, Nico Cranshaw, like Herman of Ryzen, Glenn Johnson. These are top players. Um, so yeah, I just thought, okay then, if I'm going to go to Portsmouth, I'm going to Portsmouth, but I'm playing with top players. It was good to end up getting into Europe, playing against AC Milan at Fratton Park. The final whistle sounds. Spurs have clinched a place in the Carling Cup final. Before I left Tottenham, I played in all the League Cup games, scored a lot of goals. Was it the semi-final or the quarter-final? I scored against Man City. Nice ball inside the fullback for Aaron Lennon. And Defoe scores. To get us through and then end up leaving, so I missed the final. I got a medal, but of course I missed the final since that being injured. I missed that final and then I signed for Portsmouth and I'm cup tied for the FA Cup final. Okay. It was a good day though, because obviously we won a part of a winning team, even though I was cup tied and that. And um, yeah, it was, it was a special day and I was, I was, so, I was happy for, for the manager because it was, um, he deserved that to be fair. I lifted the trophy though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Yeah, give me that. Yeah, what? I lift it. Yeah, just going back home. Went on holiday, came back. I remember the dentist, Peter, um, the club dentist at Tottenham, phoned me. I can't remember who was Spurs were playing against at home, like the lane, but all the Tottenham fans were singing my name. And I was like, well, this can't be normal because I play for Portsmouth. I was like, Pete, Apple, what, you're an agent as well, yeah? Dentist and an agent, make it happen then. <laughs> at this point, I didn't ask going back to Tottenham. But what happened was, at that point, at that, I think at that stage, they were, Tottenham in the bottom three, they were struggling a bit. Um, and I think the fans were like, well, just bring him back. Um, Bobby Keane had left, I left. 
Then at Fratton Park, we played against Tottenham. I, remember, I think I scored a penalty. And uh, obviously, you've got Portsmouth fans singing my name, and then Tottenham fans start singing my name. And I was like, well, this is a bit mad. Then Harry ended up going, and I just knew straight away then. As soon as he phoned me, I was just like, yeah, bring me back. Uncle Harry bring his boys back, innit? It? It, it was just mad. And then Crenshaw come as well, didn't he? Nico come. It's mad. And we know that we're. Because at this point, right, Champions League was massive. Obviously, like it is now. And I, I think the manager knew that with this squad, really, we should be getting in the top four and competing. So it was just one of those things where the manager, he doesn't understand how my players go out, to be honest. He always says to us, right, you can go out, but go out with your. Go out, like, have a meal, a glass of wine. Or like go out with your wives and your girlfriends, have a glass of wine and stuff like that. But I don't want players going out drinking and getting smashed. You can't do it in London because you'll get caught. It obviously came to Christmas. Us being us, we sort of like, okay, what can we do to, to, to try and get Christmas doing? I think we ended up going to, I think it was Dublin. We probably would have been all right, but obviously with Crouchy there, you can't hide, can you? So, yeah. Did you get caught? We got caught, yeah. yeah. You know, when they got the roof bit and he's standing that like it's like Crouchy, man. What are you trying to do to us? We're going to get in trouble. Like, we're trying to hide on that. He's had a few beers, he's getting excited and that. And he's, Got this giraffe going down flipping Oxford Street in London. <laughs> Doing a robot in the car and that. <laughs> He's funny. I got the feeling in the first five minutes. I remember I'd done something in a game and I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm on it. You just got this, you just get a feeling. I felt light, I felt really sharp. It was only 1 0 at half time. How did you score? It was 1 0 at half time. And we scored eight goals in the second half. And I remember when I got the first one, it was just like, it was just mad. I got the second, I got the third. But when I scored the hat trick, I thought, nah. I never thought I scored five goals in the Premier League game. Yeah, yeah. You know, you do that for your district or your school team. <laughs> as soon as I scored the fifth, in my head I was like, yes. Because I knew Shearer had done it, Andy Cole had done it. And I was the third player to do it in Premier League history. So, And that's why Harry was so good as well. Your manager saying that you're the best, you're the best finisher in the country. What does that do for your confidence? And that's why, if he was England manager, I probably would have had another 50 caps. Obviously, because I missed the World Cup before, so you can imagine. So this season, I'm not going to miss it again. So I was just so focused. I had a good pre-season. I was just flying. And then what happened was, I, my hamstring. I picked up a little niggle in my hamstring. I remember getting a phone call from Gary Lewin, who was the physio for England. And he basically just said to me, right, Capello said, um, Fabio just said, just basically just, just take it easy. Don't do anything stupid because obviously we've got the World Cup in the summer. Um, and I knew from then that I was going, but I never, I never said anything to anyone. But I got, I got on with Fabio for, just, he, he just had that presence. I used to do certain movements in training and he'd just be like, good, keep doing that, good, like that. And that was it. If, so it was like, if he told you to do a certain movement and you do it, he's happy, that's it. Even if you don't get the ball, no problem, it's, it's good. I just knew if, if, if I keep doing this and scoring goals, then he's going to take me, and that was it. England are in danger of slipping out of the competition unless they can beat Slovenia today. I just remember the ball going out wide. I can't remember who passed it to Milner. Now, I remember being in the box and the defender was like, here, I need to get across the near post, so this is where I need to be. So I need to get you, I need to try and move you out of the way. Out of the way. But it's all about timing and stuff that I've practised with being right when I was younger. So I can sort that, so I can get across the near post, and it was just the timing was just perfect. And as I moved him a little bit, if you watch the goal back, I got, I got him on the back foot, and I just died across the front post. And as soon as it came, once again, it's I sort of like just light up. You know when you get a, when a chance, when you see a chance, your eyes sort of like light up, and then I just just finished. It ends here for England. Last 16 and out for Steven Gerrard and his team. Gutted, really gutted, because it's like you're knocked out again. You know, you sit there, you think, there's no guarantee a lot of the players, no guarantee you might even get a chance to even play in the next World Cup. This is your chance, you know what I mean? And you get knocked out by Germany, you, you drew against USA, Algeria nil nil. You win one nil, and you get knocked out by Germany. It was a disappointing tournament, to be honest. That's probably my best goal, my week of four, and like a volley outside the box, because you can try that in training, and it's just like, over the bar, over the bar. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you'd always hit one in training, you think, oh, I want to do that in a game. 
what he'd done was, in that game, he played big Fletch. So Fletch, Team Fletcher played up front, but he said, just stay, just stay in front of him so you're facing a goal, so you can hit your shots. Instead of being the focal point and running behind, stay in front of him so you can be more effective in the game. So, okay, cool, no problem. But naturally, in that game, I kept running back because I just wanted to win so bad because um, it's such an important game and, and for the fans and everyone. And I remember the ball just going long and I, was, and I remember just gambling and coming forward and Fletch handed it down to me. I was going to control it. And I just thought, I'm so tired, my legs. I was waiting for the, the, the half-time whistle. I thought, I'm just going to hit it. And I, I remember hitting it and, and as, it, as I connected, I remember thinking, oh my God. Like one of those quick moments, like one second thinking, oh my God, I connected perfect. Just went bang. When I hit the top corner, that was it. I couldn't believe it. That was it. I felt like, you know when you watch Aladdin and the genie comes up and you could do anything. That's, that, this is how I felt, like so powerful. I remember running and celebrating, all the lads got on top of me. And then uh, the raw the atmosphere, like the roof come off. I remember standing up and then I just got like, just got emotional. So I was just so happy, like, do you know what I mean? And it was just like such an important goal and the way I scored it, yeah, proper. Left foot as well. I met Bradley, I think it was the second season. I remember Louise, she's like the press girl, saying to me, oh, there's, there's a young kid that he wants to meet you. Like he's a mascot, but he loves you, blah, blah, blah. But obviously he's not well. He's got neuroblastoma and all that sort of stuff. She explained it. And I remember just being in the change rooms and he ran over to me, jumped on my lap. And then um, I was like, because the way she described it, I thought I would be like, it'd be really quiet. And after that, I remember saying to Louise, can you get me in contact like with a family? Um, Gemma and Carl, the mum and dad, and then hopefully, and then maybe I can go up to the hospital and see him, and then probably get a better understanding of what's going on. And then, that, and then just went from there. Went to the hospital, like for a few hours. I went to the house, like spent an hour with him, and then that was it. Oh, it's funny. Just character. He used to do this thing where the cameras used to come. He'd be here like this, and the cameras come out, and he used to do this thing. That, I say to Gemma, how does it, like, who told him, did you teach him to do that? She was like, no. So why does he do it? I don't know. You know, when there was games, I'd want him to walk out with me so he could get that, he gets that experience. Towards the end, it was difficult because he struggled towards the end. That, the pain increased and all that sort of stuff. He struggled towards the end, so it was harder. Then the England game, when I got back into the England squad, he came out with me, which was good. Um, it was a special day. Um, so, so many, so many special memories. But of course, yeah, it was, it was, it was hard, but uh, the bond was strong. And he was so loving for a kid. He used to cuddle me and he used to like tap my back and stuff like, the little things that he used to do was just like, just so genuine. I was in Dubai and then my mum phoned me. She goes to me, are you, are you sitting down? I was actually relaxing in Dubai in the sun. So when she said that to me, naturally I just stood up because I thought it was bad news. So I stood up and I started panicking. My heart started beating. I said, what, mum? And she said, right, you've just got a letter. You've got OBE. I was like, whatever. I was like, yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? If anything, MB, like, I said, what do you mean I've got OBE? I remember just going to the palace, Buckingham Palace, and it was just like, wow. Um, such a special feeling. It's hard to explain it because because I always thought about, obviously, like, like we've gone over playing the Premier League, playing for England, and you get there, it's like, it's a special feeling, but I've seen this in my head. But I've never, I've never ever thought about getting OB and standing in rehearsals and Prince Charles is there and you're sort of like, um, being given this OBE. It's just like, it was mad, so surreal. They said, how are you? I said, yeah, I'm good, thank you. How's football? I said, yeah, it's good. I said, I took a day off today. <laughs> the manager gave me a day off today and that, and that but he said, ah, oh, Walked backwards, because you can't tell, I walked backwards, turned to my right, and I walked out, and um, Tom Hardy was there. 
he, he just got here just before me. I was like, how you doing, Tom? You right, mate? <laughs> so it was just like, the day was just, the day was just mental. I'm standing there with this OB and that, and I just thought, ah, this is, this is special, because this is more than football. It's you as a person. Obviously, Stephen got in contact. Have like we got a chance of signing you? Agent phoned me and said, right, put the telly on. I remember watching it, the stadium was just like rocking. Go, My agent said, okay, do you want to experience this? I was like, yeah. I thought, you know what? If I don't take this opportunity, I may, I may never get this again. Experience the old firm, having a chance to win a league title. Um, 55 league titles is the one that they were craving. I remember meeting Stevie. And he basically said to me, he said, this is the nearest thing I've seen to Liverpool. I was like, really? He said, it is a giant club, sleeping giant at the time. And I want to get it back to where it should be. Straight away you think, I need to win. Because I don't ever want to leave here without winning anything. And it's like, when you walk down the tunnel, there's, to your right hand side, there's a list of players that won stuff. League titles at Rangers. But imagine leaving here and your name's not on there. And I knew from the first week in pre-season, that we were going to win that league. Because I said to the manager, I noticed like a different sort of focus with the players. The gym was packed to a point where you need like membership. Like it was, it was, the gym was packed with players. The lads ticked every single box, every player, before training in the gym, after training in the gym. Standards every day. New chefs that went to Liverpool came back. They're dominating Europe. If go to Liverpool, come back. This, this is what we want. Sports science, medical team, everything. So I think he just said, right, okay, here you go. We give you everything to go and win, go and win. And then that was it, and that's what we did. Like you, you couldn't speak on the pitch. The noise, I remember turning around and they'd do the, the bouncy, bouncy, but And I remember the, the, the stadium was like bouncing all the fans. And I was like that, wow, this is, and then my mum said to me after the game, she said, it's so funny, she goes, I can, I can see why you like it here now. I can see, I, I get it now. She's like, wow, this is it's mad. I think there's more to life than just football. And I think you, when you've got to a certain point where you can actually give something back, I see comments on my social media, you're an unbelievable footballer. Or you're, okay, it's, an, it's a good feeling, but when I see a lot of comments and not only you're an unbelievable footballer, but you're a good person. I think for me, that means a lot more. So the football stuff, of course, yeah, great. Um, but just to be a good person, I think that's more important than anything else.